Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, I'm going to be going over the all-new Mercedes Sprinter. Now, this Sprinter is the one that I think a lot of people are going to go for because it's the shorter wheelbase version, aka the version that would be a little bit easier to turn into an off-road adventure Sprinter. Before we get into this video, though, a huge shout-out and thank you to the Mercedes-Benz of Farmington for giving me some time with this Sprinter. I'm going to include a link to their inventory in the description down below so you can check out what they have currently. If you have any questions or need any help, just ask for John. And then on a side note, if you want to save time and money, the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's Let's get into it. Under the hood, we have a turbocharged two liter four cylinder that goes through a nine speed automatic transmission. Again, this is a gas engine. It puts out 188 horsepower and then 258 pound feet of torque. There are two diesel engine options you can also get with the Sprinter. Now, before we go over the front end of the Sprinter, I do want to mention, if you want to see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. So starting with the hood here, you guys can see the little vent pieces on either side, but notice how it's like completely closed off. So that's just for stylistic purposes. And I like the desert tan on this one. Now you guys can see halogen for the headlights. We do have some parking sensors here on the front end. And then look at the giant Mercedes logo there with the camera front and center will below the logo. And then here's your full front view. I'm not sure if the tan is really showing very well because of the lighting, but it looks really cool. I think it looks a lot cooler than the white that you normally see on cargo vans. Come around the side here, tire wheel setup is 245, 75, 16 in the front and over in the rear as well. And then you guys can see here with the wheel design, notice how it's all blacked out, which kind of has that cool off-roader appearance. And then you guys will note the gap here isn't as large. And that's one of the ways you can tell that this is a two-wheel drive Sprinter instead of a four-wheel drive Sprinter. And when I say four-wheel drive, I mean all-wheel drive because the... Anyways, you guys can see here with the cladding on the side, I think that looks really cool. And then notice how it goes to tan just down below that. And then here's your full side view on the Sprinter. And again, this is where you can see the benefits of the shorter wheelbase. It's still a large vehicle, but this would be a lot more manageable on a trail. So here's our key fob. You guys can see we've got our unlock function, our lock function, the Mercedes logo here on the front. And other than that, just regular Mercedes key fob. Now popping over to the rear, um, opening this up is actually pretty easy and straightforward. And then you guys can see here on the other side as well. But guess what? That's not all. If you push a little bit further, then you can keep swinging the door open um, basically to this point here. And then same thing with the other door as well if you need the door to be a little bit more open. And you can feel the distinct like point where it's it can't go anymore. It's got like a hard um, feel to it. And so here's what it looks like if you take a few steps back. Now, if you're wondering, payload capacity with this one is 4,129 pounds. That's what the sticker indicates. You guys can see we also have a tow package down below as well. But actually, popping in, got to take quite a bit of a step. I like that there's already like a floor here from the factory, and it's not just exposed paint that you're stepping on. And then, yeah, you guys can see you've got quite a bit of vertical room in here, so you can fully stand up. I imagine you'd have to be like maybe six foot four, six foot five before you'd hit the top roughly. And then you guys can see with the lighting in here as well. Um, this one in particular does not have any sort of windows or anything like that. Um, but you can see there's still quite a bit of like space to uh, fit stuff back here. And then when you're all done, just pull this door over and boop. And then with the other one, and one of the easy ways to tell which door you should close first is Mercedes logo it will always be second so that you don't uh, close them in the wrong way. Now here are the taillights on the Sprinter. Notice we got our 2500 badge as well. And then you can see all the rest of the badges here on the back. Parking sensors there in the rear. And then if we take a few steps back, there's your full view of the rear. And then of course we do have a side door here as well. And you guys can see that pretty easy to use. And then obviously it allows you to enter the rear from the side rather than from the back. Now popping inside, you guys can see we've got some padding here where you'd rest your arm. We've got all of our window controls here with our mirror adjustments. The mirrors do power fold in. Here's a quick look at them. You got the convex mirror as well. Door lock and unlock, and then you get your heated seat function. And look at all the storage space here on the door panel. And then here are these seats, as you can see, leather here, which looks very nice. Uh, the seat is manually adjustable, but notice it does have lumbar. And then we got all of our light controls here, and then look at like the vent, pretty cool looking. So here is our steering wheel. You guys can see the nice padding all around. You got darker stitching to match. 
Um, paddle shifter is there on the back for that 9-speed automatic. Some controls here for the infotainment system. That's what little black box is for volume voice command controls. We've got our adaptive cruise control and then controls for the center stack. Turn signal windshield wiper stock, and then we do have our column shifter as well. So here is the center gauge cluster. You guys can see mostly analog, but we do have this screen here in the center that we can basically use to scroll through different uh, bits of information on the vehicle. Pretty standard stuff, um, frankly. It also kind of doubles as like a secondary infotainment system. We can look at all the different menus that you can scroll through. Now in reverse, we do have a full 360 camera system, which really helps out with the Sprinter because it's such a large vehicle. And you can see I can go through the different camera viewpoints. Resolution, by the way, fantastic with the camera system. Now as for the rest of the infotainment system, you guys can see response time with the screens really good. And this does have like a very thick plastic covering over it. So I'm impressed it's able to respond uh, as well as it is. Um, but again, it's basically a Mercedes normal system. You guys can see we've got some shortcut buttons here at the bottom for like the camera, for example. You can see the volume controls. And then here on the other side, we've got more shortcut buttons. Like if I press the little van button, notice it'll pull up stuff for like the safety tech, which is pretty cool. We've got some climate control action just down below, as you can see. And then down below that, you can see we've got some cup holders here. And then it doesn't have like a closing glove box per se, but I mean, it still has some storage there. And there is more storage on top of the dash as well. And then you guys can see, we do have a rear view mirror with a manual dimmer, but it's honestly pretty dang pointless because we don't have any windows back there. <laughs> um, anyways, we got some sun visor action here and then we do have more storage up above the driver and above the passenger as well. And there's some lights right there. So here's our window sticker for the Sprinter 2500, 144 inch. You guys can see all the standard equipment here, warranty information, and then the optional equipment on this particular one. And then base MSRP 44,500, total MSRP on this one 57,476. Let's see how it drives with the gas engine. Well, let's talk about visibility before we set off in the Sprinter. Here's your visibility of the hood, both of the mirrors. And then of course, uh, nothing throughout the rest of the rear. <laughs> no windows, but let's set off. Um, so if you guys don't know, I have already reviewed the all wheel drive Sprinter with the high output diesel engine. And so I will be, I didn't close the side door. I'm an idiot. Okay, well we are back after I closed the uh, side door. What I found is that it's actually better to use two hands on the side door rather than just doing the handle. Um, so. I guess that's a pro tip if your sprinter door doesn't feel like closing. But uh, I want to make some comparisons between this gas powertrain and the high output. Obviously, I haven't driven the standard output um, diesel powertrain, so I won't be able to talk about that. But first off, you can instantly feel a difference with like the torque. Uh, just the overall feel like that diesel just has like such like a punchy feel, whereas this it's not bad for a cargo van. It's actually really solid, but it doesn't have the same punch as the diesel powertrain. Yeah, it's interesting to hear like the little turbo whoosh with it. It's not bad though so far. I mean, we'll get a big acceleration here in just a moment. Um, I do want to mention the suspension on this new sprint is really comfortable. That's something that I noticed with the longer one, but this is the shorter uh, wheelbase and still really comfortable. So it's it's definitely interesting to see that. I would say that this would be actually a really good daily driver vehicle, believe it or not. Okay, let's see how this goes. <laughs> Pretty good. Uh, yeah, the diesel is like a lot quicker, like a lot, a lot. Um, it's it's a pretty it's a pretty substantial difference, but again, that makes sense. The high output versus this being the, you know, quote unquote base engine. Um, with that being said, though, for a cargo van, it's it's honestly pretty, it's 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 right where it needs to be. Um, the nine speed automatic does a really good job of keeping it right where it needs to be in the uh, power bend. So summing things up, uh, I really like this variation of the Sprinter um, because. Right, it's the shorter version, so this is the one that people will deck out. Now, I know a lot of people are gonna make comments on the fact that this is not the all-wheel drive version, and listen, I hear you, um, but hear, hear me out on this. Um, there are some companies that have been working on 
basically building out like a limited slip differential for the Sprinter. And I don't know if Mercedes offers that from the factory. I don't think they do. Um, but to make it so the two wheel drive one's a little bit more capable, but regardless, I mean, you can just get this with all wheel drive if you want all wheel drive. They make it like this one right here. They have that one's all wheel drive, but that's the longer uh, version. I think that's the 170 something, but you guys can see all wheel drive badge there on it. Um, but regardless, let me know what you guys think about the new Sprinter. Let me know what you think about the gas powertrain. Um, again, I haven't reviewed the base diesel, but what I can tell you is from reviewing this base gas powertrain, I personally would be okay with spending the extra money to get the diesel, but let me know your thoughts.